Hey everyone, David here. Today I'm going to be walking you through this DIY Mossarium build. I built it for some isopods, so stick around and I'll walk you through the entire build. I'll be using this enclosure I got from a local home goods store. I believe it was only a few dollars. For this build I'm going with Oko stone. It's such a beautiful stone and has awesome characteristics. I also found these cool pieces of bark with lichen on them outside and I figured why not? This would be a great project for them. After I got everything organized, it's time to start the build. I'm also using one of these plant pots. I'll be cutting it in half and you'll see why. I've cut the pots in half and they're being hidden by some bark. These will be siliconed inside along with the other hardscape. As you can see, I start to place the materials inside. Each piece gets a little bit of silicone on the back and then is placed in its spot. You kind of just got to feel around for it to figure out where everything goes. Make sure you leave plenty of space for moss in between. And I like to use stones that aren't glued in place to help bolster other rocks that will be siliconed. It's kind of hard to work like this and as you can see, I had to speed it up a little bit, but it only took me about 20 minutes to do this and then let it dry for a day or so. So just adding more material and more rocks and siliconing in place. Also figuring out other smaller rocks and I really want this to wrap around to the front of the enclosure and it will really help with more planting as you'll see when we start to do that. It doesn't look like much, but here's my final hardscape. It'll tie in together when we add the plants, don't worry. For the drainage layer, I'm adding a mixture of river rocks and lyca. This was left over from a pond I took down last summer. And remember, always slope your substrate to the back. Here I am filling my little pots with aqua soil. This didn't work out too well because the aqua soil is way too small for the holes, so I ended up having to shove some moss in first, and then I was able to add the aqua soil, but definitely got everywhere. For the substrate barrier, I just cut a piece of cocoa fiber mat down to size. Again, this was just something I had left over. It wasn't exactly ideal, as I would prefer to use screen, but this is what I had on hand. And as you can see, I forgot to film me filling up the aqua soil. This is what I used for the substrate in this build. As you can see, I start to plant my moss. I'm not quite sure what species this is, but I found it in my backyard. I just wedge moss into all the crevices between the stones and around the stones until the background is completely filled in. This really helps tie in all the hardscape together. With all the gaps in between the stones, it doesn't feel natural at all. Next, I'll add this Fetonia alba venus for a pop of color. Next comes this coleus with its bright neon green leaves and a hint of red. To contrast the bright colors comes the darker tones of Sex Africa stolonifria. What a mouthful, huh? It's also known as strawberry begonia. On the other side of the Vitonia comes Peperomia quadrangularis. All these plants have these awesome white veins, and they all kind of complement each other in their each unique way. Next comes Hydrocotyl triptytida. This is actually an aquarium plant, but it grows great in humid, immersed environments. I place it throughout the builds and it will slowly creep and take over the builds. I also added a little bit more Fetonia. I just felt like it needed a little bit more pop of that color.
I decided to remove some of the moss from the floor. It just looked like one big mat, and I wanted to switch it up with a little bit of decorative sand or pebbles in the front. You'll see in a little bit. As you can see, I added some of these dark gray pebbles. They have such a unique texture and color, and I really think they complement the build. After planting, I missed down all the plants on the side of the glass just to clean things up a bit. After that, it's time to add our inhabitants. As you can see here, I have a culture from Serpa Design. You may have heard of him. He gave me this culture a few years ago now, and I've since grown four or five cultures from it. These springtails will help clean up decaying matter and mold in the terrarium. Next, the star of our show, isopods. I collected these locally outside. Finally, it's time to seal things up. I would normally cut a lid for this type of enclosure, but I didn't have any plastic laying around. Some tightly pulled saran wrap and an X-Acto blade will do great for the time being. And there you go, that's our final build. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see it grown in, and here's a shot of where it's gonna sit in my living room. I think it adds the perfect mood to this environment. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.